next speaker. Um, so we move to the to the regulatory and market design aspects, and this is uh, Pankaj uh, Batra, who is uh, with the Central Electricity Authority in India. Thank you. Uh. Uh, good afternoon. I think uh, whenever some new sort of system evolves, like people's participation in uh, in generation and grid operation. It always starts with uh, policy and then regulation. And uh, th that's the same thing that th the way it functions around the world, I think. Uh, so I'll talk about the regulatory challenges which are there uh, and how India has dealt with them. Uh, so th these are not actually slides. This is a PDF, so I'll move it down like this <laughs> so because it, it didn't fit into the the storage space which which I could uh, send. So you you can see that uh, the, what are distributed energy sources? What we are talking about is distributed variable RE sources. But uh, what I what I'll start with is what are distributed energy sources? Are energy sources which are standalone, which which could be microgrids. Uh, or connected to the grid at the distribution level. So it could be grid connected microgrids uh, or or uh, standard or uh, rooftop solar PV, things like this, but they could be standalone also. Uh, these enc encompass many uh, resource uh, types and technologies which may be located in front of the meter as well as behind the meter. So uh, all the rooftop solar PVs are, uh, which people install in residences are normally located behind the meter. Uh, whereas you can have these located in front of the meter, which are which are probably the ones which communities put up, uh, or uh, the large uh, plants. I mean, larger plants. Uh, and the advantage is they're located at the point of consumption, so if there's if if so it eliminates a lot of inefficiencies of of uh, transmission and distribution, uh, as well as uh, saves on cost of transmission and distribution infrastructure. I think these are, this is common knowledge. That's why we are all going into this. Uh, now, distributed variable RE sources are renewable DER, that, uh, like rooftop solar and micro wind turbines, also micro wind turbines that people install on top of their houses uh, in, in China and some other places uh, that depend on nature for their generation. So therefore, if they depend on generation, there, there's, there's variability of uh, depending on resources which of solar and wind, which is available available, uh, and to counteract this variability, man has made variable or flexible distributed storage devices and a facilitated flexible demand. Uh, so this is just a, a, a rooftop solar PV, which we are showing, and a microgrid in an Indian village, which is standalone. Now, what are the challenges? of distributed variable RE sources. Uh, most wind and utility scale solar plants connect to the grid at the high voltage level, uh, which is equipped with the protection, control, and communication technology to support intermittent two-way power flows that can help operators manage their variability. Uh, and of course, the other challenges associated with variable RES uh, are the requirement of balancing generation, reactive power draw, in, and injection, injection of harmonics, DC injection, flicker, et cetera. Now, this is for large-scale power plants, as well as uh, the second point is, is for uh, the requirement of balancing generation is for rooftop solar PV and distributed generation also, if they are RE uh, sources. Now. Uh, distributed uh, variable RE sources are proliferating very fast internationally, but many of them are without the protection, control, and communication, as mentioned above, and therefore they have no visibility to the system operator who has to operate the grid in a secure and stable manner. Now, Government of India has also set up a large target of 40 gigawatt of rooftop, rooftop solar PV out of a total of 100 gigawatt, which is around 40% of the uh, total solar uh, target. Now, if you see this, this is the Indian duck curve, which is, uh, you'd be knowing about the California duck curve. This is the Indian duck curve, which is we plotted uh, for the year 2022, 
when we expect this 175,000 uh, uh, megawatt of uh, renewable energy, which includes the 100,000 uh, megawatts or, or 100 gigawatts of solar, uh, which in, uh, under which that 40 gigawatt of rooftop solar PV comes. So it, there's a challenge here because if you see the solar, which is uh, there in the, in the center, uh, the one, the red curve is the net demand on the grid. So the one, the top one blue is the actual demand, but because solar comes during the daytime, this is over 24 hours. Um, so when it comes during the daytime, the net demand for, to be met from other renewable sources decreases during the day. And therefore these other conventional sources have to ramp up. Uh, you can see from, from 14 hours onwards, they have to ramp up uh, uh, in a steep manner. This is another challenge, but uh, this, is of, since it includes distributed generations, I'm just telling you about the different challenges which will occur, whether they are decent uh, distributed G, uh, variable energy sources, uh, RES, or, or ones which are centrally, uh, which, are, which are in the, in the, in the main grid. Now, CA has uh, the Central XD Authority, which is the technical arm of Ministry of Power, has issued uh, technical standards for connectivity of distributed generation resources in 2013. And these have provisions for DR also on communication and storage of data. They have uh, provisions for protection, safety, and metering uh, as required by the distribution licensee. However, these regulations leave it to the distribution licensee to specify these requirements, uh, of, out of which most uh, distribution licensees have not done that. Therefore, there's a challenge there. Uh, the standards are there, except that the regulations uh, at the, at the, by the state level have to be made, those have to be made. Uh, of course, there are also, there are also provisions for, uh, for abiding by limits of harmonic injection, DC injection, flicker, uh, as are given in the regulations. Uh, the other solutions uh, which are, are that you need to balance the grid. Micro storage, uh, which, which could include battery storage at the, at the, uh, distrib uh, at the uh, distributed level, or thermal storage. Now, we have, I think, in all houses, thermal storage, which is uh, available in the form of storage water heaters. And this is not used. Uh, this would be an invaluable source of demand response, uh, or uh, whenever your, your solar generation is there, you uh, use this for heating, and whenever or solar or wind goes down, you uh, cut off these ones. So it's a, it's a very invaluable source which we're not using, uh, which we would like to use. Uh, and of course, uh, in, in, in India, we have a lot of uh, houses which have inverters with batteries. So these act like a source of supply whenever the main grid supply goes off. And uh, many people have, uh, or some of the people have suggested that, uh, uh, have suggested that uh, the batteries which are, which are installed in houses can also be used to feed back into the grid uh, if, uh, if, if, if uh, required. So that, that's an invaluable source of ancillary services for the grid. Uh, but, and of course, forecasting is, uh, yeah, how, how we can facilitate all this, uh, the, uh, the, these uh, sources to be used are by regulations having a tariff for, for uh, uh, interruptible supply and a lower tariff for interruptible supply and a higher tariff for reliable supply. So, or you can have even one smart meter which has got two points half of which gives you reliable supply. I mean, one point gives you reliable supply, another gives you interruptible supply and with different tariffs. So it's for the customer to choose if he, if he thinks that something is not very important, he'll connect it to the interruptible supply. And if he thinks uh, something is reliably required, he could connect it to the reliable supply. So reliable supply, uh, for example, uh, could be lights and fans and refrigerator in some cases, whereas Interruptible supply could be uh, uh, connecting the geyser and, and the washing machine and things like that, which, 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 you, which could start and whenever uh, the supply comes. Uh, so just by enabling these regulations to be there, th this can happen. Of course, forecasting is required to be done on a centralized basis because we don't expect every rooftop solar PV to start doing forecasting. Well, that, that's required for uh, helping the system operator balance load and generation at each point of time. And of course, for standalone microgrids, 
uh, where, uh, there you need to have smart inverters to balance load and generation at each point of time. So uh, the key, key message or takeaways are that regulations already exist in India for DVRS or the, uh, to facilitate uh, grid operation, also to ensure power quality. These need to be enforced. Now that's a problem because for enforcing this in rooftop uh, solar PV for each and every person is a task, of course. Uh, and micro storage and demand response should be facilitated through regulations for helping dealing with the challenges of grid operation and DVRS. Forecasting has to be done by the distribution system operator for grid-connected DVRS on collective transformer-wise and feeder-wise basis to see that the, these transformers or feeders are not getting overloaded. And for standalone microgrids, smart inverters would have to be used. Thank you. <laughs>